The Advanced Guide to Microsoft Word 2013 Who Done It? Another Computer Mama Guide Every office, big or small, needs to make forms. We use forms to gather data and to ensure that the information is accurate and complete. Today we're going to use Microsoft Word to create a form. This form is going to be interactive. It'll include controls such as drop-down combo boxes and date pickers. In this lesson, we finally get to meet the developer tools, the cool tools, so that we can create the controls that our users need. This form will include several different types of controls. There are some sample files that you can download if you wish. The ribbon that we're really going to focus on is the developer ribbon. So, if you are ready, please start the program Microsoft Word and open a new blank document. Hello, Word. This form will use a table for our layout and design. So, go to Insert, Tables, Table. Use the grid to select a 3 by 8 table. What do you see? You should see a table that has three columns wide and eight rows deep. Let's start with the labels. Click on cell A1 and type name. Please include the colon and a space. These are the labels, and my form control will be next to them. Tab over to cell C1 and type location. Now go to A2 and type computer name. In C2, type date. Keep going. I need operating system. And then in A4, applications open at the time of the incident. The table is selected so the table tools are available. I'm going to use the layout ribbon to merge the cells. Select cells A1 and B1, please. And go to Table Tools Layout, Merge. Click on Merge Cells. Do it again. Select A2 and B2. Go to Table Tools Layout, Merge, Merge Cells. For the operating system, I'm going to select the other two cells, B3 and C3, and merge them. For applications open at the time of the incident, I selected all three cells and merged them. One, two, skip a few. Skip a few rows and please type severity of the problem. And on the last row, type presenting issues. When you create a form, you have to give your users room to write down their answers, either in print or by hand. So, select the entire table. The table tools are available. Go to Table Tools, Layout, Cell Size. Please increase the height. Okay, this form is looking pretty good. It's time to go get the developer ribbon. Go to File, Options, and click on Customize Ribbon. On the left-hand side are all the controls we already have open. Look on the right-hand side, at the bottom of the right-hand side. The developer ribbon is there, but it isn't checked on. Click on Check, and then click OK. Hello, Developer Ribbon! There should be a new ribbon at the top of your screen for the developer tools. It includes code, add-ins, and controls. Click your cursor after the label name. This is where we're going to place our first control. Go to Developer, Controls. I would like to have a text control, and Microsoft Word has two different types. Click on the first one, Rich Text Control. What do you see? There should be a new control that tells the user, click here to enter text. That looks good. Click your cursor after the label location. For this control, I'd like to have a drop-down combo box so my users can pick a room from the list. The list is static, it doesn't change, so they shouldn't have to type it in. Go to Developer, Controls, and click on Combo Box. What do you see? 
there should be a new control on your form. If you tried to use this control right now, you would find that it is empty. We need to edit the properties. So, the control is still selected. Go to Developer, Controls, Properties. When the property sheet opens, you're going to be prompted to fill in the blanks. For the title, type Location. At the bottom, we're going to edit the drop down list properties. Click on Add. Type Red Room. Click Add again. Type Gold Room. Add another one. Conference Room. And the last one. Library. Use the buttons on the left to move the items up or down. People like an alphabetical list. Well, does it work? Click on the combo box and can you see the names? Red Room, Gold Room, and Library. Pretty neat, isn't it? Here's another one. Place your cursor after the label date and go to Developers, Control, and click on the Date Picker. What do you see? If you click on the down arrow, does it have today's date highlighted in red? Can you choose any date that you wish? Tell me that's not just cool. It works. Place your cursor after Operating System and go to Developer, Controls, Combo Box. For the title, please type Operating System and add the following. Windows 10, add. Windows 8, add. Windows 7, add. Windows XP, add. And Apple OS 10. Click OK. Say you spelled one of these entries wrong. Click on the one that's not correct, and now you can click on Modify to change how it was entered. Very good. There is a new control on your form called Operating System. When you click on the down arrow, you should be able to see the things that we entered in the list. We are programmers. When a computer crashes, many applications may be opened at the same time, and that may be part of the problem. So we're going to document the list with a combo box. Place your cursor in the cell and go to Developer, Controls, Combo Box. I've added a few sample names and used the arrows on the right-hand side to move the items up and down, so it's kind of alphabetical. Click OK. I test the form control. It does work. Now our users can document all the applications that were open at the time the computer crashed. We'll also use a combo box to document the level of severity for this problem. Go to Developers, Control, Combo Box. I'm going to document it as follows. It won't boot. The blue screen of death. Application error and user request. Done and done. There's one more step. Before you release a form for users, you need to protect the document. Go to Developer, Protect, Restrict Editing. What do you see? There should be a new task pane on the right-hand side that lets you edit the restrictions. Since we are working on a form, I would like to have option number two and from the drop-down list I'm going to choose in Filling in Forms. When you are ready, you can click on Start Enforcing. You will be prompted whether or not to use a password. You don't have to. Click OK. What happens when you restrict the form? The fields all work, but your users cannot change anything else. And neither can we. Go back to the task pane and click on Stop Enforcement so we can do some more editing. I'm going to select the entire table and move it down a scooch so I have room at the top for some word art and a graphic. I've placed my cursor on the top line. Now, go to Insert, Illustrations, 
word art. Type bug report and change the size to be larger. Place your cursor in front of the word art and go to Insert Illustration Pictures. I've browsed to the folder where I've saved my downloads and selected a picture. Select the entire table so that the table tools are available. Go to Table Tools, Design, and choose a table style. In this style, the header row was dark, so I went back to the Table Tools and checked off header row. Now I can see my form controls. Well, this must be advanced word because I have ribbons all over the place. There are table tools, picture tools, and more importantly, the developer tools. We use the developer tools to add form fields for our users. It is always easy to select the right answer from the list instead of typing it wrong. Well, I think you've done good for this lesson. You can get the cookie. This is the Computer Mama. And thank you for coming.